Hi guys and welcome to this session. In this video we will learn how to estimate beta for a stock in Python. Beta measures the systematic or non-diversifiable risk in a specific stock. After measuring how much undiversifiable risk investors have to take when investing in that stock, we will estimate what is a fair return for that amount of risk. In other words, we estimate what should be the expected return on that stock for investors. The company we will be working on is Tesla. So, uh, like always, we first import necessary libraries. These include usual libraries we have been working with, such as pandas, matplotlib, and so on, as you can see here. The only particular one we will be using is uh, get fama French factors that is helpful for obtaining fama French factors, such as the market risk premium in the US, for example. Of course, there are other ways to get the data, uh, but uh, here we will be using uh, get fama French factors and it's quite nice, uh, I think. If you don't have these installed uh, and you get an error when trying to import them, you need to first go to command prompt and write pip install and then mention the library name uh, you would like to install and then come here and import them. Here I have all of them installed already, so I don't need to do that. As a quick reminder, to estimate beta for a company, we would need to run the following regressions where the dependent variable is the excess return of the stock and the independent variable is the excess return on the market portfolio. In our case here, we will need to have the stock returns of Tesla, the risk-free rate, and the returns on the S&P 500 index, which is commonly taken as the market portfolio in the US. We typically estimate such regressions with five years of monthly data, which means five times 12 uh, equals 60 observations. Okay, first, uh, let's start to obtain the required data. For the stock prices, we will be getting them from Yahoo Finance. Of course, you can go and manually download the data from Yahoo Finance, save it as a CSV file, and then use it in this analysis. However, we will be trying to automate this task here. Let's first start a period for which we will get Tesla's stock price from Yahoo Finance. We can set the end of the period to be now or today, which is uh, February 24th, 2021. As I mentioned before, for estimating beta, we typically use five years of monthly data here, let's start to get the data for a longer period, but we will keep only the last 60 observations or the last five years of the data for regressions later on. So I define the start time to be the same day and month as uh, today, but the start year to be six years before, uh, which means uh, 2015. I also need to define the ticker uh, for the stock I am trying to use here. The ticker for Tesla is TSLA. Okay, and now uh, that I have the start, uh, the end date, and the ticker specified, I can use a reader to get data from Yahoo Finance. I need to pass the ticker which I have defined above to be Tesla, the start and the end time. And I can call these stock prices. Okay, I can ask to show me the first five lines of the data. Okay, cool. Uh, you see that it starts from February 24, 2015, which is uh, six years from now, actually. But 
Here it shows me too many variables, uh, volumes of trade, low, high, etc. In fact, I only need the adjusted close price. So I can specify it above, uh, so it just brings the adjusted close for me. Okay, good. Now, notice that the prices are in daily frequency. I remind you that we want to use monthly data for our analysis here. Of course, we could have tried to obtain the monthly data to begin with, but I think it's great to learn how to change the sample frequency, which would be very useful for many tasks we will do in the future. And it's super easy in Python to do. So to convert these daily to monthly prices, we need to specify our data, which is stock underline prices, and then apply resample. We pass one month and we get the last available price in each month. So if I show the first few observations, you see that the first one is February 28th, then it's uh, March 31st and so on. So it's the last available data on each month. Now that we converted our stock prices to monthly frequency, we can compute the monthly stock returns. Remember that for our regressions, we need the returns and not the price data. To compute the returns, we can start by our data, which is stock underlying prices, and then apply percentage change. This will give us changes in the monthly prices, which is the monthly returns. Let's call it stock underlying returns. Let's print the first few observations. Okay, of course, since we have the returns, the first observation now is not a number since the change could not be computed for it. Here, there will not be an issue for us, uh, but if you wanted to remove this missing observation, you could use a drop NA for that. Let's do it, uh, in fact, here. Okay, now I have my monthly stock return ready here, and this data is called stock underline returns. Now, I need to have the market risk premium, which is the market returns minus the risk-free rate. This is, in fact, one of the factors in the Fama French three-factor model. So I can use get Fama French three factors with the frequency set to monthly. And I can put this in a pandas data frame uh, let's call our uh, data ff3 underline monthly um, indicating pharma French uh, three uh, factors in the monthly frequency. Let's see what that reports to us. So it reports all the three pharma French factors, which are the market excess returns, SMB and HML. And also it gives us the risk-free rate that we will need, in fact, later on. Since we are using the CAPM here, we only need the excess return on the market and uh, the risk-free rate. In future videos, when we work on uh, three-factor models, we will use SMB and HML as well. As you see here, the date is called date underline FF underline factors. Let's rename this column to date and in place to true. By default, in place is false, which means that we get a new data frame with this new column title. But in this case, I want to ignore the previous title completely and change the original uh, data set. Okay, sounds good. Now uh, let's also replace the index with uh, the date variable here. Okay, cool. 
So what we should do now is to merge Tesla's stock return data with the data on factors I have here. How do we do that? We can use the FF3 underlying monthly data and ask Python to merge it with stock underlying returns data, which includes Tesla's stock return. Here I can define which index to be used for matching the two data set. We need to match them according to the date variable, of course. Let's call this new data frame data. And let's see the first few rows. Now you see that all the factors along with the risk free rate and Tesla's stock price are given here. If you remember, we started with collecting more than five years of data. So let's now check the shape of this data. Indeed, it's more than five years or 60 observations. So uh, let's get the last 60 observations from this data by using the tail method. And again, let's see the first few lines. The starting date indeed now shows exactly five years from now. Okay, now I am good with the number of observations. I have the excess returns on the market, which is my right hand side variable, if you remember. And for my dependent variable, I needed the excess return on Tesla's stock. I can compute Tesla underline excess underline return as the return on Tesla's stock minus the return on risk free rate. And I can add this series along with other data and call it TSLA minus risk free. Okay, let's see the data. Good. I have now all the variables I needed for the CAPM regression. Before even running the regression, we can easily check the relationship between the two variables graphically by using Seaborn reg plot. We define our X and Y variables and specify the data. This gives us a scatter plot of excess returns on the market versus excess returns on Tesla's stock. It also fits a linear line together with 95% confidence interval, as you can see here. So this graphical illustration is very nice, I think, but we need to run our regression and get the slope of this line which is in fact the beta we are trying uh, to estimate. Okay, now let's define x and y variables in uh, the regression. As discussed, x is the excess return on the market, mkt minus uh, risk free, y is the excess return on Tesla or TSLA minus RFU. We are here using stats model as the statistical tool for running our regressions and we will be using OLS or ordinary least squares method with our dependent and independent variables. In fact, we also need to add the constant or uh, the intercept to the regression. So we can add a constant to our x variable and call it x1. Then we use x1, which is the excess return on the market and the constant as the independent variables on the right hand side of the regression equation. Then I need to fit the model and I can save the results in results. Okay, and I can report this, the results summary. Okay, here we can see the details of the model and the output. 
our coefficient of interest is uh, the one on uh, market minus risk free which is 2.08 in fact this is the estimated beta for tesla so the beta of tesla is currently around 2 which is quite high but not unexpected of course now we can save the results of this regression using params uh, attribute. We call the intercept alpha and the slope beta. And for example, uh, let's report beta to make sure things are working as we think. Okay, all is fine. Now, Let's finally use the CAPM to estimate the expected return on Tesla. According to the CAPM, the expected return is computed as the risk free plus a risk premium. And that risk premium depends on the market risk premium reflecting the price of one unit of risk and the beta, which is somehow uh, the quantity of risk in the stock. For example, if beta of a stock is 1, it means that it has the same amount of riskiness as the market portfolio, and hence, based on the cap M, it should have an expected return equal to the expected return on the market portfolio. However, here we saw that Tesla has a beta of 2 which means that it has twice as much risk as the overall market portfolio. As a result, to be compensated for this non-diversifiable risk in Tesla, investors should expect a return that is about twice the overall market return. So let's now compute this expected return on Tesla using the CAPM. As you see, we need a risk-free rate for which I can use the average uh, risk-free rate in the data I have, and it is 0.09%. Uh, I also need expected re excess return on the market. I will here simply use the average excess returns in my sample for the sake of this analysis, and it is 1.3%. Please note that these are all returns on monthly frequencies and not yearly. For example, 1.3% is the average monthly return on the S&P 500 in excess of risk-free rate during this period. Surely this does not mean that we can expect this return in the future and it's just the average return on the past five years. We will discuss more details on how to find a better proxy for expected return on the market in other videos. For now, we take the average market excess return in our data set as the expected re excess return. And with this, I have all the inputs uh, to compute the expected return on a Tesla using the CAPM. So Tesla expected expected return is equal to risk free plus a beta multiplies uh, by market premium so again this gives us the monthly expected return to get the yearly return we can approximate it by multiplying it uh, simply uh, to 12 this gives us an expected return of uh, about 30 3% according to the cap M and with the assumptions we discussed. As the last words, I would like to emphasize that this analysis is just for illustration and how uh, we can compute the beta for a stock and use cap M uh, to compute the expected return for that stock in Python. And it's definitely not meant to be an investment advice, of course. I hope this video was useful for you and thanks for watching.